Hey guys, Morgan from Seven Dust here, and you're watching CMS TV. Seth Williams show with Chris Aiken. Hello. Hello, Seth. Hello. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm in the mood for, for radio today. I'm in the mood to do this or TV. Just, what do we call this now? TV? Uh, radio? It it's all of the above. It's all in one. <laughs> all inclusive show is what you get. There you go. I'm in the mood to be in front of the ring light. How's that? There you go. <laughs> My ring light is flashing uh, rainbow colors today. Oh, is it? I thought that was uh, yesterday. Well, that was yesterday, but I'm feeling the ambiance of it today. And uh, so I kind of like it. You feeling your trans glow? I, mean, I am. I'm glowing <laughs> in my transness today. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to say that I would like all gifts and or food items sent to uh, Four Summit Drive in Independence. Because today is the start of... Uh, Loss of limb and limb different month. Wow. Uh, so that means otherwise people have lost <laughs> an arm, a leg, or whatever. It's the, it's our month. And you get a whole month? Yes. Look at that. I am just like the pride folks. I get an entire month to uh, celebrate the fact that I am deformed and no longer have a leg. I, what you're in rare company i so guess you, if if you if you lose a leg suck cock or are black you get a month i get a month that's well, fantastic I get, I get more days than than black people do because they get february and it's right. so missing a few days so they don't get recognized as much as i will get recognized um eating disorder week was at the end of february so they only get a week Ugh. so if we're anorexic or bulimic congratulations but you only get a week well, should we have celebrated that because we both are fat? Yes, we technically that would be even the bonus, so we would get that week as well. But I can say that I get a full month of celebration of losing a leg. Well, that is awesome. Congratulations. Hey, ha thanks. Happy yeah. Lost Limb Day or hey, month. I, month. I, I, I really uh, appreciate it. I'd like to uh, thank everybody out there for the support, and I'd like to uh, celebrate. 
If you go to Bob Francis' post today on, on Facebook, it was quite quite great that the fact that he acknowledged me and posted a picture of my fake limb on his <laughs> uh, Facebook page, of which I shared to my page as well, and I thanked him for the acknowledgement and the a lot of people thought it was fucked up. They thought it was a um, like a an April Fool's joke. Right. No, no, it's not an April Fool's joke. This is actually loss of limb and limb difference uh, month. Well, that's fantastic. Somebody posted in the chat room, what if you were a gay handicapped black man? Well, Jesus, you get a whole quarter. Yeah, you get a quarter of the year. <laughs> just to you. <laughs> and you get an extra week if you're fat. Yes, and if you're fat, you get the eating disorder week as well. Fantastic. And at some point, you could do little things, too, to add some more days. You could talk like a pirate, or isn't that a day? <laughs> There's plenty of days that we can all <laughs> celebrate together. But I don't want anybody taking away my thunder. I mean, this would look, I've waited a long time to be able to celebrate something, because white people, white guy day or month isn't really a thing. You know, yeah, so we don't get that every day. day. Oh, that, that, you're, wait, that's every day you're celebrating. No, I've been waiting a very long time to get a... Uh, a celebration of my whatever it is of and your limblessness I, your limblessness now i have a day or a month a full month to celebrate my limb difference see that's what i figured out too by looking at the title of my month is that limb difference that means i have different looking limbs than you do that they're yes post <laughs> Ladies, I'd like to point out that that is a size 14 shoe that you're looking at. Size 14 wide, if you will. Does that indicate another day? Ladies, you know what that means. Big feet. Big shoes. Large, large cock with one leg day? <laughs> that just means big shoes. That should mean that should mean a full month, if that's really what it is. But I uh I, I you know I expect to, you know. When is the uh, parade for people like me? I'm assuming that, you know, Limb Difference Month, we have a parade for us loss of limb people. I would think Imagine so. Why not? Parade, a whole bunch of people hopping down fucking Euclid Avenue. <laughs> you know what and they, they really should wave And they can't wave. It's just. It's yeah, they, they should have. There. You know what they should have for that day or for that month? Races. A day of races. Driving with the fucking hand race, you know, the hand things like yeah. you've got on your car, you know, three-legged race, of course. Well, I believe that Bob said in his post that I am the champion of the three-legged race at uh, Salem Media. So there you go. <laughs> I have that going for me. The company pick when picnics, I'm a big hit. Of course, if you did the standard three-legged race, wouldn't it actually just be a two-legged race? I guess. <laughs> because both guys would only have one leg? We could tie the stumps together. Yeah, there you go. Tie the stumps. <laughs> uh, How many move. people would be offended by this if, if you hadn't lost a leg? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of being you know somebody different is that you're allowed to make fun of yourself. If somebody else does it, they're fucked. But right. I can go ahead and make fun of myself all day long. Now, I was slightly offended. Now, Bob, I don't know, can he get away with making fun of me the way that he's making fun of me? Because, you know, he is not limb different. I think he's celebrating you. Well, then I should get a cake or something. Do I get a cake at, you know, my appointment? <laughs> Maybe he's planning a cake and that's the candle. <laughs> it could be. But I think cake is the reason I lost the first one. So I'm guessing <laughs> cake is probably not the best way to go. Unless I want to really celebrate Limb Difference Day and have nothing. Well, maybe he'll give you a rice cake <laughs> just to take care of you. <laughs> but imagine, imagine a parade full of uh, Limb Different people. Can't wave because they're just waving stumps around, hopping down the street. It would be a great parade. One hell of a parade there. Parade it wouldn't be any more. Different. It would not be any more freaky than the Gay Pride Parade. Well, that's true. I would not be humping on a stripper pole uh, that I know of. <laughs> Anyways, what would you rather see? Five miles of of limbless people making their way up a road, or five miles of gay 
overtly gay. Right. People celebrating Pride Month. Because I don't care if we're gay. I really yeah, I don't. don't either. But I, I, care. I care about that. It's a it's a guy girl with purple hair and ring through the nose going hi i'm collars. lashonda yeah yeah with, yeah with dog collars and everything else yeah. yeah it's awful i think i'd rather i'd rather see the limbless day i'd rather watch the operation i'm cutting off the limbs <laughs> i'm trying to read some of these uh, i can put them on the screen hey look bob checks in uh, Bob also is a limb different person. <laughs> limb different? Who came up with that term? I don't know. I, when I Googled it today, that's what came up. So limb he, different. Yes. Bob is also a limb different person. Uh, so we are celebrating our month together, myself and Bob. Bob will get his uh, limb different prosthetic at some point in the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to checking in with him. That's where this is where we gather us limb different people. Yeah. Actually, I think there is a limb different flag. You have to. Can you look that up? A limb different flag, or an is amputee it, flag? Or is whatever. it cut in half? There is a. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe there is a symbol or some sort of a flag for the uh, the limb different limb loss people. Oh, uh, let's see images here. Amputee flag. These can't be real. I believe there is a, an empty flag. I'm thinking this isn't as real, but this is really stupid looking. If this is the real flag, they failed. They failed you limb different people big time. Let me see. Hold on. I'm pulling it. Let me get it real quick. Yeah, I saw something that looked like a limb different. This one came up in a couple of different versions. So I'm assuming that it's it. Uh, but it looks pretty fucking dumb. Um, here you go. No, that's not what I saw. No, that's not the limb different flag. No, because there's like that. there's that like a soldier limb different flag. There's like a bunch of different ones here of that same design. Really? Mine. The so one I saw this morning more looked like a uh, had like a ribbon kind of look to it. <laughs> Some of these are brutal. Some of these I would laugh if I saw them on the street. Even if, even if it yeah, was. Yeah, here. I don't know how to pull it up. I just just up. email email me the link and I'll pull it up. What about this one? Would you wear this shirt? Would you would you fly this flag? <laughs> I have a shirt like that. I have a shirt like that. I actually just got my. Uh, Do you really? <laughs> Yeah, it says it has me, uh, a guy like that standing there. It says I'm stumped on it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and I just got one in the mail the other day. It's got a prosthetic leg on the front. It says I'm down to my last leg. <laughs> Holy smokes! Limb different day or month? Right, I'm sending. Um, do I want me to email this to you? Yeah, email it to me. Limb different month. If I if you just type in amputee month, it pops up. Well, that's what I typed in, and it, well, I typed in amputee flag, amputee, amputee month. Um, is it the the ribbon with the fake leg on it? It's a, it's a ribbon, no doubt. So, because probably what I'm going to send you is what you're going to see. Okay, let's see if this is it. Good grief! In all honesty, aren't you just tired of all these fake, stupid days? I just say what I found. All right, let's see. It's gonna have a bunch of images, but well, it's all pretty much the same. Is that it? <laughs> no, but that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Is that that's not it either, huh? <laughs> there, you could, there's various versions, I believe, so that might be one of them. But I'm not. I'm down with that one. That one looks pretty good. Right, but it's see. not just legs. I mean, amputees come in many. I've technically been an amputee of some sort for a while because I've been married for like 18 years, so <laughs> definitely lost one limb right? Uh, thanks to wedding cake not that long ago. And married for a long time. You lost two testicles, too, but that's another <laughs> story. <laughs> totally amputated. Oh, this is just a ribbon. That's no good. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of what it is. Come on, that's just that's just normalizing. We want well, that's I mean, look. I don't want something obscene and weird. It's, you know, it's a real moment. Come on, you, don't you want something to stand out? We're celebrating, and I want it to be for real. That's what it is. It's a for real celebration of loss of limb and limb different people. There you go. That's just an orange ribbon. I want this entire audience to don your 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 orange ribbons in support of us limb different people. They should have found some way to tie that off like a tourniquet or something. <laughs> I expect that every restaurant that I go to, there will be some sort of a limb different. Is that a guy in a wheelchair at the bottom there? I think so, yeah. From Independence Now. I think that's the organization that makes this or that invented this or something. Um, you know, again, I want to know about whatever specials there are for us limb different people. Yeah, you should get some. I, would I mean, think. fucking Biden's going to acknowledge the trans folks at, at all costs on Easter Sunday of all things, even though it really technically falls on March 31st every year, but still acknowledging you know the trans people over the uh, Easter folks. So if Joe Biden can acknowledge trans folks, and I think uh, listening to Charlie Kirk today, they said there's 145 calendar days where somebody that is gay, uh, trans, whatever it is, is recognized throughout the year. I think that Joe Biden could acknowledge the fact that there are limb different people out there and, you know, fork over some specials for us. Right. I, I think so. Able, I should be able to hop into IHOP of all things and get like half off my fucking meal. <laughs> you should get free. Absolutely. You should get free at IHOP. Without a doubt. <laughs> During Limb <laughs> Appreciation Month, Limb Loss Appreciation Month, if I go to IHOP, I should get a free fucking meal. At least, at least I quarter think so. off. Yeah, a quarter you off. Get half food. price on shoes. Yeah, without a doubt, people with missing a hand should get half price on gloves. Look, it should be a quarter off for however many limbs you're missing. Yeah, I, I'm for that. I'm with that. I'm I'm I don't see why that couldn't be a thing. It should be a thing. Yeah, it, it absolutely. Why, why do I? You know, I mean, I have a month. I should get something for it. Yeah, instead of just just a stupid orange ribbon. <laughs> well, today is today is a day, isn't it? Maybe isn't today Joe a, Biden Day? Maybe you should have a bone saw on it. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Joe Biden Day, right? Is it? April Fools. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely, it's it's April Fools. Thanks to uh, Joe Biden. Well, and he's a fool, so yeah. it's his day. <laughs> it is absolutely his day. It's his day. He's celebrated. <laughs> that guy is a fucking idiot. He's not much worse than the uh, the vice president, though. You saw yeah, dude. last week. Did you see what she did. What did she do last week? She's a Moron too. California's mandatory minimum wage for fast food. Here's everything you need to know. Clapping along to the protest of her being there song. <laughs> well, yeah. Until somebody decides to tell her, that, no, they're not clapping for you. They're not singing to you. They're yeah. protesting the fact that you're here. Yeah, they'd rather be stoning you to death, but instead they'll just sing a bad song about you. But she's so dumb. You know what, dude? Is she really that dumb? Uh, uh, now, uh, you know, as much as, and you know, I can't stand her or Biden or any of these people. But her aide that to the other side of her was clapping right along too, and he started clapping. She only reacted to him. Well, they're, they're a bunch of fools. I mean, the whole thing. well, they are. I mean, but look, 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 look what's going on in this country, man? We're, we're losing it. It's completely over. We have a guy in the president who went and, and had a fundraiser with Barack Obama and Bill Clinton last week. Yeah, and. Charging these rich people hundred thousand dollars a picture, right? Uh, 
made $25, $26 million on this, this charity event at Radio City Music Hall while there are protesters outside. Meanwhile, the guy that's running against him was at the funeral for a fallen police officer. The two criminals had rap sheets bigger than this room that I'm sitting in. Right. And Biden is still supported by a bunch of idiots out there. Well, yeah, of course. Dude, he's going to get his votes. I mean, $80 million last time, he's going to get at least $100 million this time, right? Which is a lost cause. <laughs> and that's why you know, I really am. I really need to just start celebrating the fact that I have no leg. And I mean, maybe I should stop worrying about the big stuff, like the fact that this country's going to hell. And those flames you see behind you are actually coming our way very soon. <laughs> they are. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Dude, it's time for you to just get on the system and take everything you can from these cocksuckers. That's what I might have to do. You know, I, I got a message from our friend, the Plain Truth guy, otherwise uh -huh. Flat Earth guy, Yeah. Uh, over the weekend with this eclipse that's coming on Monday of next week. Okay. Um, his text to me was basically... The rapture is coming. Are you prepared? On Monday? I said, is it soon? Because I'd kind of like to know exactly the date behind this. Uh, right. Is he saying it's Monday? He, say, he said, quote, it's very soon. Mm. So maybe it's Monday. Well, he told me in the past that this definitely, this eclipse is some sort of path that forms a cross and everything else. And that, that this could be the end. It that wouldn't would shock me because the way that this 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 world is going. Forget about the country. The way that this world is going. If this one, if it, if it was the end, like if the if the minute the solar eclipse happened, the Earth blew up or something, would that really be that upsetting? Oh, look, all right. I thought about this long and hard because when he said it to me, I was kind of concerned. And, and so I started thinking about like how I would like it to end. I would like a little bit of warning. I'd like a little bit of warning to at least get my wife and, and family together so that way we can, you know, sit together and hug or whatever it is until the end actually hits, as opposed to just a bomb hitting and then whoosh, we're all gone. When really? You See, I'm, I am a thousand percent the other way. I am I am definitely, you know... Surprise bullet in the back of the head, guy. Just don't know it's coming. Don't know it hit you. You know, I I could just see you out on the beach in what was that movie? The day after tomorrow. Yeah, whatever. You and yeah. you and your family just sitting there watching the wave come in to wipe you out. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a different one, but yes, I. I Wasn't that the day after tomorrow? No, that was. Uh, I think there was another one. Or with Armageddon, a, or one of those. <laughs> yeah, there was an, another one with a woman that was sitting on the beach with her dad watching the wave come in yeah that's the day after tomorrow no, that's she's movie. the news reporter that's a different movie day after tomorrow is with uh that was the art bell James movie on all and everything no a different movie oh what was that movie called last what was that movie called damn it it's morgan freeman and tia leone yeah. i'll figure that out morgan freeman tia leone Dennis Quaid and Jake Gyllenhaal. Deep were, Impact. Deep Impact was that one, yeah. With the Biederman and with the Biederman Comet or whatever. Right. So you wouldn't want your family around you, knowing that the world's going to end, so that way you can at least say your, your goodbyes and stuff. My family knows how I feel. I don't need. I don't need a special moment to look them in the eye. No, but I would like a chance to, you know, like if my wife was at work, my daughter's at school, and I knew the end was coming. That would suck ass to not be able to, like, say. Hey, love you guys. You know, it's been real. Goodbye. You know what? That thought comes from a thought that you'll somehow have a memory behind it. That's why I make sure my family knows where, where I stand all the time. They know where I'm at all the time. That way, if something does happen, if I have a stroke today, they knew what I, you know, they know where I'm at. They know what I feel. It's not like, oh, I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. I already did. Yeah, but see, I would want that. Like, especially, you know, look, and you should know, coming from a place where you you, you almost died. Yeah. Like, having that, that instance of, like, I know the night that I, I went into the, you know, into the coma and everything else, I ended up losing a leg and all that bullshit, but I know that I didn't get that chance. And now, talking to them, I know how they felt, 
they were sitting in rooms wondering if that was the end. If that was if I was going to die, then nurses and doctors and everybody kept saying, "We don't know what's going to happen here." Sure, and you know, mm-hmm. people were literally outside my room, apparently, like watching me nonstop while I was laying there, and and so like knowing that I never had that opportunity to say, "Love you guys." Yeah, but that's yeah. that's where I got to my attitude now is from my experience was now I make sure they know so well, I, that look I do that all the time too but I'm saying if the end of the world was coming and I knew that it was coming I think I would like to have that opportunity to sit with them and say you know this sucks and you know this is going to be uh, you know the end but I love you guys and gather around together as a family and maybe and wait for it maybe but what if, what if, per se, let's just play this game out. What if you weren't in the same place? Like, what if your daughter was in college in North Carolina or something? And if if we knew the end of the world was coming, let's play the whole game out. If we knew the end of the world was coming, you wouldn't be able to call her because all the phones would be dead or yeah. circuits would be blown. So then you would spend your last moments in regret. Your your last thoughts would be regret because you wouldn't be able to say, you know, I love you or I care about you or any of that stuff. Your last thoughts would be, damn it, this sucks. <laughs> Where if you just got blown up, it's like, gone. I feel bad for Natalie. She must have just joined. She's like, hey, I hope everybody had a great Easter weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're talking tr- about the end of the world. and <laughs> But, but what, I, what I'm saying though, is that if I did have that opportunity, I'd rather take that opportunity, obviously. It may not present itself. I'm just saying, you know, it's kind of funny you said that because my daughter is actually visiting college in South Carolina. Uh, as we speak. Oh, wow. That was so a guess. the fact that you said that makes me kind of worry that that's when it's going to happen now. <laughs> we're going to look back at this podcast and fuck, remember that day that Chris said she was at college in South Carolina and the whole fucking world's going to end? I guess me and Flat Earth Guy are connected, connected in the brain. <laughs> But I would like to have that opportunity to sit with you know my wife, and I just hope that it wouldn't end like she's like, "Oh, well, we're sitting here, and the world is going to end." I have to tell you that I cheated on you. Then I'd be like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> 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 then I'd probably have to kill her before the world ended. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, like three seconds before, <laughs> here's a murder I can get away with. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. What would you do? Like, if you knew, say Flat Earth Guy's right, and the rapture mm-hmm. is coming on Monday when this eclipse happens, and all of a sudden, there was some sort of sign from God saying, hey, look, man, you got 24 hours to figure this shit out, because the, is, is, the end is coming. What would you do? I mean, would you go out there and start killing people that you don't like? Would nah, you? I'm not that vengeful anymore. Would you eat whatever you want i mean how would you yeah well that i would probably do i would probably just go and do anything that i want to do that i mm-hmm. that i just don't do right now the streets would probably be absolutely crazy, oh yeah right? it I mean, would, everybody dude, would be going nuts it would be mad max it would be absolute mad max it's almost mad max now i was gonna say it's not much different than now then <laughs> yeah it, it would it would be straight chaos i i would probably honestly i'd probably bum, you know hunker down in my in my house and just get my guns around me and stuff to make sure nobody gets to kill me before, before God and the world does. Because I, I guess that would, be, I guess a more plausible thing if it was called plausible, but then God, you know, the rapture and everything. But what if there was a deep impact kind of moment where there was a comet or a meteor or something headed our way and scientists pretty much could say, look, this is going to be the end. I mean, there ain't, there's no mm-hmm. Ben Affleck that's going to, you know, with Bruce Willis, it's going to, especially not Bruce Willis now, but going <laughs> to travel to the uh, the comet and destroy it. I mean, we're all fucked. I mean, this thing's going to hit in like a month. So you have a month before the world is going to end. Enjoy your life. What are you going to do? I mean, do you think like businesses would stay open? Could I still No. Why would you stay open? Well, can I go to Disney World if I wanted to go to Disney? I mean, or. Why would you stay open? Why as a business, look. I own my pinball place. What am I going to do? Offer a offer a you know going out of existence sale? I mean, come on, dude. Okay, well, then <laughs> would you leave it open and just let people go in and play and do whatever they want to do? I mean, would Disney stay open so I can go ride some rides? No, absolutely not. Because you still got to have people to run the place. 
Dude, every window in every place would be torn down. Every uh, fence would be torn down. <laughs> you're really destroying my uh, end of the world happiness thought here of like being able to do what I want to do for thirty days before I well, die. There's no happiness if the, well, if you know it's their pizza either. So it's not going to be able to eat what I want to eat. Well, that's it. You gotta thank God you've got the my Patriot supply or whatever in the in the basement so that you got something to eat for those last 30 days i mean would your electric and, and gas all of a sudden go out because nobody's gonna be manning the the, the could be. be able to do that so it's not like you're gonna be able to cook something yeah it could be i mean so you're not- saying that if somebody announced tomorrow that there was a comet headed our way we're all gonna get it explode in like 30 days we're just fucked might as well off it before then it's not a bad plan I mean, if you know that you're, if you know for a fact that you're fucked, then, then what's the point just to see it? That's the only reason you would really have to say, to stay around would be to see what's going to happen. Curiosity would be the only reason to stay. Quick reminder. It is a national loss of limb and limb difference month. So if right. wants to send gifts, uh, you can send it to four summit parkway. Or some a drive, actually. Yeah, and if any of you that are give, have businesses are giving something away during National Limb Loss and Limb, what is it? Limb Limb Loss and Limb Difference Month. Text you, in. Yeah, we'd like to know what what um our our um, limb deficient friends can um get from your business. Yeah. Look at this. Main question is: Would y'all still do a show next Monday if the world is ending? No, I would. There might probably wouldn't be internet. Okay, if there was internet, wouldn't you want to do like a countdown? Of course, yeah. Let people know, okay, this is day number uh, 28 uh, before we're all going to die. Of course, I'd be looking for webcams all over the place to see the crazy. I might do the show naked, though. I mean, I guess all all the ambitions would go out the window, right? Like, I mean, you wouldn't care about anything anymore. No. That would be just your luck, though, is that you do the show and you do so all kinds of horrific things that you would never do. And then it doesn't happen. The comet misses us by like yeah. 500 miles. <laughs> yeah. The comet veers left at the last second or something. And <laughs> there's nothing but fucking fucking porn pics of you on, on. Yeah. I've murdered uh, six people. And there's <laughs> naked pictures of me everywhere. Yeah. That exactly would be my luck. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Did you see Trump is selling Bibles now? Maybe that's the end of the world. Trump is, is he? Bible. Yeah, he's selling Bibles for like 60 bucks. And Mike Chisuk was bitching about it. I said, Chisuk, you fuck. If you knew what a Bible was, you would understand that people need Bibles more now than ever in this country. <laughs> and they could probably help if they spent 60 bucks and buy one from Trump. Yeah, they need comedy and levity, too. So go tell some jokes, Mike. Jesus. <laughs> no, go... Go buy a comedy book and learn some jokes. <laughs> I mean, come on. That is kind of cheese ball. He's selling Bibles. Is that is that to pay for that stupid fine that he has? I don't have I mean they reduced that fine, so Yeah, but still. Yeah, they reduced it to only a hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, like I mean, you know, his, his true social is trading at like six billion. <laughs> so yeah, I get it. I I'm not saying he's I'm not saying it. he's broke. I'm just saying that, you know. He doesn't need to be selling Bibles either. He just sold a a pretty useless uh, platform. If you take him off that platform, what do you think it's worth? Oh, I mean, thirty cents. Yeah, spit. I mean, that that's the real problem. Is if you take him off the platform, it's not worth anything. So, do you have any like? Would you have any last minute, last thirty day things you would want to do to in do your life? Hmm. Obviously, you can't accomplish anything. You're, 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 yeah, I don't know, man. I don't. You're not gonna make the record books on something, but you, something that you would like sit there and go, I, 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 if I had thirty days to live, I have to do this before I, I die. I truthfully don't. You know, it's it, me and my brother go back and forth with this all the time, like. You you know the the old bucket list that everybody you know keeps. I've kind of done mine. I've really done all the things that I wanted to do in my life as far as you know getting into the music business and hanging out with rock stars and writing books and doing businesses. You know, traveling the world. I've been I've been to thirty whatever countries. You know, I've kind of done everything. Honestly, if we knew we only had thirty days left. And this goes back to what you were saying, kind of. I would probably pull my kids in 
and spend the last 30 days doing that, just watching movies and, you know, drinking it up and listening to music, and that, that'd probably be it. I'd probably stay very drunk. I was going to say, that would be one thing that I would absolutely do, you know, especially because I haven't really had a whole lot of drinks and I, def- I quit smoking and all that. I think if there was 30 days left, I would absolutely, first thing I would do is rob the fuck out of a liquor store <laughs> and get, like, a whole bunch of liquor and a whole bunch of cigarettes and just, you know, sit back and be hammered a lot. Oh, yeah. I could see me smoking 500 pounds of weed. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I might actually try that again. You know, I might, <laughs> might smoke a little weed. And- yeah. I, I mean, I could see that, but I think that would be how I would want to go out anyway. It's just surrounded by tunes and movies and, you know. I'd rob a drug dealer without a doubt. <laughs> Nobody's going to care if I murder a drug dealer at that point. So I'm going to murder some drug dealer and take a whole bunch of drugs, too. <laughs> yeah, might as well. What's going to happen? You have a stroke? I mean, I, I mean, I just want to spend my last 30 days really, really happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that probably true. <laughs> we got 30 days. Seth makes it three. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would, again, that would be my problem. Is I'd fucking rob a Burger King, then I'd rob a liquor store, then I'd rob a drug dealer, and then it would, like the first five days would be nothing but like paradise for me, just downing whoppers and coke right. and, and vodka, and I'd be dead within a week. <laughs> <laughs> and there wouldn't be anybody to bury you, because yeah. why? Yeah, why bother? Why even bother? Just leave you in the front yard. I'm convinced that's why God has not blessed me with like a lot of money, because God knows that I would fuck up everything in my life, dude. Like I would seriously, I would, like I could never be like an actor or a uh, athlete or something like that. They made millions and millions of dollars because I would. I'd have like a Burger King built on the side of my house, <laughs> just literally just selling me whoppers on a day to day basis. I, I would have like a drug dealer on on speed dial. I would have you know hookers and blow everywhere mm-hmm. and i'd be dead within a week of being rich <laughs> i'll never win a lottery because god wants to protect my life right <laughs> well you know i mean dude there, there's not a lot of untruth to that i mean look look at all these look at all these guys that have money that just turn out to be despicable horrible people i think i'd be a nice guy i think i'd be a really nice person i'd be happy as fuck but i, I, I wouldn't last long i don't think well, if you were doing all that stuff, but then wouldn't you, you would probably push the boundaries, same as like Puff Daddy or whatever. You'd be like, all right, well, I've done everything that I could do that regular people do. Let me do some stuff that's illegal and see if I can get away with it. Like, I had a friend, I used to be a friend that I worked with in radio. Yeah. Like, we were really, like, really good friends for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm not a violent person, but I would definitely get some hookers. Um, <laughs> but this guy, good friend of radio back in the day, and his dad was like a minister or something like that. Right. His dad said, you know, he didn't know how bad his son actually was. His son was a dick and a douche, but and did a lot of horrible things. But his dad said, your friend Seth, you know, he just loves pleasure and that's all he he does is anything that would make him happy and please him that's what he does and i said well you know that's kind of true i mean i don't want to live my life fucking miserable (laughs) but i don't hurt people in the process it's not like i do that but yeah i do like to enjoy life where's the misery in that where's the problem in that i guess if you live a hedonistic lifestyle at times he was you know I don't think God likes that all that much. Um, whatever. Whatever. If if the thought is that God wants you to be a miserable slave, then who wants that? That's kind yeah, of where I mean, I've if always I wanted to be a, that. A miserable, unfunny, lonely ass and just be Chiselka. Yeah, and yeah, just sitting there going, oh, well, oh. I, I can't do that. The Lord says no. The Lord says no. Everything about the Lord enough look i am an absolute believer in in god and well, me too believe me, i pray every single day and i know that sounds weird but i do i don't go to church probably like i'm supposed to i'm not a good christian in that way but i do pray to god literally every single day and i do believe in god and i'm very thankful that i'm still here after the uh 
the leg accident, the coma, and all that kind of stuff. I'm thankful. Like, you know, you may not look at it the same way that I do, but I look at it as divine intervention that you just happened to find out what I was doing, what happened with me, and we, our paths ended up crossing, and I have you to do this show with. Because if you weren't around, I wouldn't have a show still. Yeah. That ship would have sailed a very long time ago. <laughs> and so I mean, it was sinking fast as it was. But it's so, nice you know, to I hear, but, but you can't. Divine intervention. You, See, I'm just not I'm not I'm not a believer per se in the puppet master thing. I am a believer though in you get put in situations that you make choices in. Like for me, for me when I saw you were going through some shit because of what I've been through has taught me for the for the years after to always try to try to use the strength that I have in dealing with shit to, to help other people get through it because it would have been nice if I would have had that person. And I really didn't when I was going through it, you know, and that's why I reached out to you when I saw it. But I what saw are the odds of that? What are the odds? I mean, how long had it been honestly, since you and I had been a while, but it that didn't while. matter. It didn't matter. What mattered was that I saw, you know, I would do that for, and I'm not trying to downplay it or nothing. I'm just saying I would do that for anybody that I've known and I, that was cool to me that I would, you know, I would definitely try to help. I, I, I am that guy. And I, and I understand that. But my point is, and what I truly believe is, is that there was a reason that it happened the way that it happened, that our paths crossed the way that it did. It could did. be. Yeah. And there, there could be truth to that. Sure. I mean, it just so happened that I happened to be working with Billy Morse uh, doing the podcast thing. It just so happened that you found out about it. It just so happened that everything happened the way that it did. And so I think that God puts people in positions. Sometimes you have yeah. to recognize that, that that you're in that position, and that's what you did. And that's what you did with the, you know, because of your accident and what you had happened to you. And I think that God puts you in position sometimes to make choices and you have to see that. You have to be a, sure. in tune to that to make those decisions. And I think that that's what happened here. Yeah. Well, I, and I do agree with that. I just, I don't agree in like puppet master thought that there's some big puppet in the sky that's pulling strings and saying, okay, now you're going to move over here and you're going to, I, I, I don't believe I, that either. I don't think God has the time to deal with, you know, 14 yeah. million people on the face of the earth and do all that. And nor does God really care about little old Seth yeah. in the middle of fucking Cleveland, Ohio. Right. My point, though, is that there is some sort of a path that you're on in life where certain things, you know, present themselves, and it's about you making the decision yeah. to move forward with that. Yeah. And so I do believe in, in divine intervention in that way. I don't believe that God is sitting there listening to every word that, you know, you and I say, because if that was the case, why does people die in the middle of Africa from <laughs> starvation? I, I get right. it. God you know, has... But there is a, a plan in place, I believe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. you have to recognize what that is. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't disagree. I don't disagree. It's an interesting world that's coming to an end quickly. <laughs> it is. And if you, uh, the flat, if you listen to the Flat Earth Guy, it's going to be quicker, quicker than you think. Yeah, we'll see you guys. Wednesday might be our last show ever. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> What time is that? that eclipse goes down on Monday, and I think it's about the time that we're going to start this show. Oh, it's still going to be going on. So, all right, uh, we may or may not be the, the rapture may be happening at that point in time. Yeah, might be, dude. Have you noticed how many people? Like, I for one, am not excited about it. I just didn't pay very much attention to it. I, I honestly didn't know until yesterday. I had um. I had dinner with my mom and my, my two of my kids, you know, yesterday and they were my, my mom and my daughter, especially, they were excited about this, this solar eclipse. And I was like, oh, when is that? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't even know it was happening. And, and, but then I started looking around, you know, I looked it up when I, cause they were so excited about it and. I guess they went out of their way to get special glasses and shit so that they yeah. can look at yeah. it and stuff. And so I was like, wow, there must be something to this. So I looked it up, dude. I saw on just on dumb Facebook, 
I saw probably 150 people that were like, hey, I'm coming in from St. Louis to see the the eclipse. Where's a good place to get a hotel? And can I get one within a hundred miles so that I can drive in in a rental car? Dude, it's crazy. Like my uh, wow. daughter, I guess they're already talking at her school about canceling school the next day. Really? Because they say that like their stadium is going to be open for people to watch this thing. I thought that was kind of weird because you know, somebody's going to not wear the glasses and sue the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. But they said they're talking about not having school the next day because of the traffic that's supposed to be in town. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's and what I keep hearing is like crazy. First of all, a couple of things. Uh, what does this mean? Just out of curiosity. You should feel lucky you're married, Seth. I feel lucky that I've been married twice, but I am very lucky to have the, the wife that I have now. Is he making I guess fun so that you can die in her arms. I mean, is he saying that I'm... Must have been something you said. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean it's, I am very lucky that I'm married. I haven't been alone really since I was 16 years old, so I, I mean, I'm very lucky to have people in my life, and you know, my wife to me is fantastic and the best thing that's ever happened to me. But thanks for acknowledging that there. Uh, whatever, whatever. Fabric 8. Yeah, Fabric 8. Good for you. I am very lucky. Um... <laughs> One, your mom sent me a friend request on Facebook. I did accept that. That was very nice of her. Oh, my mom did? Look at that. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, but two, yeah, I don't, my daughter is going to be in a plane while this eclipse is going on. Oh, boy. But I, she's all very excited about it and talking about, I want to go downtown and see this. And, like, I, I don't get it, man. I Look, it's a thing, I guess, but yeah. I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm looking look at, at it, it like like New Year's Eve fireworks. I can watch it on TV. It'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a recap somewhere. Yeah. What happened? And if it's the rapture, I really don't want to look at it. Well, maybe that's why school's being canceled, because there won't be any teachers left. Yeah, there's going to be nobody left. Well, it's teachers. They'll all be left, because none of them are going to heaven. No. <laughs> the way they spend all their time fucking students now, they're not going to heaven. Yeah, I know. Like, there's a couple of nice ones. Couple of nice ones. Uh, but no, I, I don't get the eclipse. I'm not ex- as excited about it as a lot of people are. Yeah, I, I, I don't. You know, we're I didn't even know. on Bob's show on Friday to talk about it. Uh-huh. And when I called him today, I called him. What? Yeah, do look. not look up there if you don't have the glasses on, people. Watch it on TV. But I. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, we, so I called this guy today because I wanted to book him for the show. Mm-hmm. And. He's like, Monday is completely booked. And he, I, I was like, well, when do you have time? He's like, I'm honestly, he's like, I'm completely booked all week. But he found time for me, like one slot on Friday from okay. the show. But people are going fucking crazy for this thing. And yeah, and they're talking about we're going to have really shitty weather this week, but the weather should be okay for for, for Monday. Wednesday? Oh, or for Monday. Is it It's uh, Monday? It's Monday. Okay. I mean, they even moved the, the time of the home opener for the the Indians for the, the really clips, man. I'm I just I don't know how I just kind of missed it, but but yes, I do because it, dude, it's funny. My mom calls me on Friday, and she goes, "Hey, um, what's um what's your plans for Easter?" And know what my answer was? When is that? <laughs> uh, I had no idea. I had no idea at all when it was. I just, dude, I'm clueless with this stuff, man. I I lose track of all this kind of stuff. Do you know how to put this up? Yeah, I'm getting it. You said this pick is literally Chris. It's pretty close. There's people like renting out like the rooftop uh, bars and all kind of stuff happening downtown that you can, you know, they're saying parking is going to be a premium and cost you a ton of money. Yeah, I'll pass. See, he's absolutely right. This is me. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right. (laughs) Looking at the computer, somebody says something's outside, take a look, close close the curtains. I don't want to see that. (laughs) Absolutely correct, sir. Absolutely correct. Well, if it is happening while the show is going on, I mean, I do have a window up here, but I mean, I guess I'd look out and see what's going on. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be 3,000 webcams. We'll be able to we'll be able to watch it live. I was on an island mm-hmm. with no electricity when Haley's Comet flew by. 
And I was in a gifted class in school last time it flew by, and I was on this island off the off of the Keys in Florida, mm-hmm. and it was pitch black. Was it Epstein Island? It was not Epstein Island. No, I was asking. <laughs> my my butt felt very nice after we left the island. Everything was okay. <laughs> um, but I saw it. It was Haley's Comet. I saw it flying. And you know what? I, I really, other than telling the story of being on a, an island with no electricity, I haven't really thought about it a whole lot since it happened. I mean, it was there. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. No. And everybody's like, well, it's, it's, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. No, it was, it was a comet. <laughs> you know, the sky and they see shit and I don't want to yeah. think about it. I mean that I mean dude I I know I've seen I've seen like little meteor showers here or there especially when I lived out in California I saw a lot more but um you know other than that whatever whatever's past the past the clouds is past me which is weird because I grew up loving space look I like it and I think it's cool I mean it really it interests me to an extent yeah. but like if I saw like a naked porn star flying through the sky, I would absolutely remember that for the rest of my life. And I might take some time to admire it, but this eclipse, I don't know if I'm going to really care. All right. I mean, but dude, let's put it into perspective of who me and you are. Yeah. You can watch the eclipse from the best seat in the entire country, or you can watch a very average porno. Watching a porno, man. You watch the porno every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> every single time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one is once in a lifetime thing or a porno that you could watch anytime you want on demand on Pornhub. Yeah. And we're both choosing the porno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I run outside and say, Did I miss any eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> I saw something shoot through the air. I don't know what it was. Seriously, I was gone for five minutes. The eclipse is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It just I don't, it doesn't excite me all the way. Maybe it excites everybody else. All day coverage on some of the news stations. Yeah. What, going what are they going to talk about? About the, the moon's going to... The moon goes in front of the sun with this, right? Yeah. So the moon is going to go in front of the sun. Yeah. Now, I did see like a TikTok video that showed like what it's going to be like in different states. Oh, you may not want to watch that because, let's just be honest, you're going to see it four million times in a row if you're watching this Channel 19 news but coverage. It shows what the eclipse is going to look like from different states. And supposedly... We here in Cleveland are going to be a prime, prime location for the total eclipse. Yeah, I heard Kent was like the the best location in the country Could be. to see this thing. That's what I read yesterday was that Kent is the the absolute optimum place to witness this. Are, are, we, are you going to go check it out or are you going to look out no. for the house? No. No to both. I, I may turn on the news. Look, I'm, I'm going to try to buy some glasses and just you know, see what happens. But I, I won't even look out my window. I'll tell you that. That picture was dead on. I will not even look out my window. How long does it last? Like, how long is it going to be dark because of the eclipse? <laughs> and you know our luck here in Cleveland. It's, it can't be long, it's, can it? It's it's it can be five minutes. You know it's going to snow or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it's the rapture, you're going to see people floating to the heavens. We live in Cleveland. It's going to snow or some shit. Now, wouldn't that be something if you're watching the news, all of a sudden you see a bunch of people floating up to the sky? Now, that would be something. I don't want to. I'd go outside to see that. Have you ever seen that movie, This is the End? or This is the End. Or The End or The End. I can't remember the name of it. It's got like a, it's got a bunch of. Celebrities in it. Uh, I think I actually own that movie, but I I don't think I've ever watched it. <laughs> I think I do own the movie though. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's like they're all in a house, they're having a party, and all of a sudden the end of the world yeah. starts. Yeah, yeah I, you I, see I people floating up into the sky. <laughs> yeah, they do that in the Left Behind movies too, don't they? The the Kirk Cameron movies. I don't know. I asked Kirk Cameron to come on a show, and his mom rejected me. So then I don't care about Kirk Cameron anymore. No. <laughs> you cared before? I like. Uh, you liked what? Pain. Growing pains? Oh, growing pains. Were you hot for the sister? 
A little bit. <laughs> Tracy Gold, especially when Tracy I found out she's, she's an alcoholic, then all of a sudden she became a lot hotter to me. Right. <laughs> Dude, that's how Jody Sweeten got on my radar for um from Full House. Full House. Yeah. Because she was a fucking crank addict for a while. Now she, yeah, she looks pretty good though. When, yeah, she looks older. fantastic. She yeah. looks she looks fantastic, but she was hotter when she was on drugs. I will say that. Now, I know that we're hopping all over the place, but we're already, already an hour into the show, so might as well keep, keep <laughs> Might on as well hopping. keep going. Um, it's not we're talking about child stars. I started watching that Quiet on a Set show that you told me. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, I'm three episodes in. If you, if, anybody out there, if you have Max, uh, Max, you must watch Quiet on a Set. Even if you didn't watch any of these these uh, Nickelodeon shows, you got to watch it. It's so, unreal. It's about Nickelodeon, and Dan Schneider, he used to be on Head of the Class back in the day. He was the fat mm-hmm. kid, yeah. and now he writes all these shows for Nickelodeon, produces them, whatever he does, and he did a lot of crazy shit. But then the other guy, Brian Fleck or something like that? Yeah, whatever his last name was, yeah. Who was also a dialogue teacher and all this kind of stuff for the... I think I believe his character was called Pickle Boy on um, <laughs> some of the shows. Uh, the stuff that he did to that Drake Bell kid is unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe I was watching <laughs> this poor kid. Now, look, I will never shame a child for being, you know, abused in this kind of way. Because yeah. they talked about sodomy. They talked about forcible entry with, like, foreign objects and all kind of stuff, dude. Probably with pickles and potatoes. Maybe whatever it was, but he woke up one day to something being done to him. And I'm telling you right now, if I was 15, 16 years old and I woke up to something being done to me by another man who you know was doing something like that, forget about it. He would have no teeth left. I would have kicked him out and I would have been suing Nickelodeon. Uh, but maybe that's just me looking at it from being now almost 50. And I don't know what it would have been like if I was 15, 16 years old. Well, you, you've you got life experience now. Back then, you know, yeah, you, you have to remember I, oh, that, you know. that these were the people that were that he was told you got to listen to. Right. Uh, but the stuff that he went through is unimaginable. Although he did get to go to Disneyland a lot, which would have been kind of cool. But the rest of it sucked. <laughs> And, yeah. and the, the stuff that they did at Nickelodeon of all fucking places, man, is just unbelievable. Now, the problem that I had, mm-hmm. I don't know if you picked up on this, and maybe you can find the scene because it's on YouTube now and it's on uh, TikTok and everything else. But the scene with Ray Romano. Oh, with the pickle? Yeah. we got Before we even talk about it, I want to play it if we can. I don't know if we have it or we can find I'm it looking, or not. I'm looking for it real quick. Um, bu- 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 I'm sure you can find it on TikTok. This might be. Is this Ray? I'm looking for. Oh, here it is, I think. Oh, oh this is just the pickle boy. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm, I'm still looking here. Pickle. <laughs> this is. Hey, Romano! Anyone? Oh, there it is. Oh. You got I, it? I, I, I gotta get it to my. Uh, I gotta get something to eat! Uh, I gotta get it to the. Uh, my email to the screen? Now. I gotta get it to my email because it's on TikTok. Right. So I'm sending it to myself now as we speak. Sorry, we still hear it. You got to hit stop. Yeah, I, I there you go. <laughs> now, I got to give you a second. I have started watching this thing, this the show, and it is the most it's disturbing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I apologize for moving over. Well, while you're waiting for that video to come, I'll, uh, did you hear about Netflix is being boycotted because they're putting a rated X <laughs> series on, on Netflix? Are they really? What's that called? Because I'm going to sign up for tonight. Um, I have Netflix. What movie am I going to be looking for? It's not out there yet, I don't think. It's called. It, it's something like called The Sex Experience or something. It's about porn. 
I thought there was another one out there like that. I don't know. There's a lot of good clips of Sidney Sweeney doing some really dirty sex scenes. I hope that's on Netflix. All right. Here, I think I got it coming up. It's processing. But if you're a Ray Romano fan or Everybody Loves Raymond fan, I want you to see this, and I want you to tell me this fuck didn't know what he was doing when he did it. Ray Romano! Anyone? I hate it in here. I've never been this hungry. I gotta get something to eat! Hello? Anyone? A pickle. Thank you. Oh, I don't know who you are, but this pickle is the best thing that ever happened to me. That's good pickle. Good. Until you're stuck in a bathroom. Oh. <laughs> now, Pickle Boy is the one that has been was in trouble for raping that, that went, to jail. went to jail. Went to jail for, for raping Drake Bell. He's yeah. sticking a pickle through a fucking hole of a bathroom door and he's sucking on it and eating it and moaning while he's doing it. Yeah. Now, if that's not a obvious glory hole scene <laughs> but and him no and him celebrating scene. how much he likes taking a taking a pickle, a pickle through a hole <laughs> are you kidding me Ray Romano should be arrested <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that that show just freaked me the fuck out man i couldn't be- you got to admit they showed so many things that you just you know you watched it and you just didn't Put A and B together. Yeah, that's really uh, that's what my takeaway from Quiet on Set was. Is that I watched all those shows, I remember all those shows, but I did not put put the pieces together at all. I mean, that was creepy as fuck when you look at it now. That's oh yeah, creepy. that's Ray Romano, and I loved Everybody Loves Raymond. Me Everybody. too. He's taking a pickle through a hole of a bathroom door. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a glory hole scene. Well, dude, how did we not think that the when they covered the the black kid with peanut butter and then had the dogs come and lick it off him? Yeah. How did we not, as adults, equate that to the old joke about you know rubbing peanut butter on your dick and having a dog lick it off? They definitely did some stuff to these kids that was just unbelievable. Unreal, man. Now, now a lot of it, you know, look, you know, one of the kids, I think it was a black kid said that he was, like, uncomfortable wearing tights for the Superman. Yeah, that was thing a stuff. Like, like, I mean, look, there are superheroes that wear tights. I mean, sorry, it's, it's kind of like... <laughs> I mean, if they were making jokes about his penis or whatever like that, I understand it would be... Cl- look, some of it seemed a little bit... You're pushing it on, on what they're, mm-hmm. they're actually doing to you. But laying a kid down and covering him in peanut butter and have a bunch of dogs lick it up is pretty messed up. A glory hole scene with a pickle yeah. is pretty messed up. And the Jamie Lynn stuff. Spears scene where they squirted the shit on her face like a cum shot. Yeah. That was messed up. Did you see that part? Yeah, I did no? see that. Ariana Grande laying on. I mean. She, yeah. There were parts that were like, damn. You're, you're sitting going, they, they were just over the top obvious with some of this stuff, man. And like not letting some of the parents around to, you know, to see stuff that was going on. I mean, wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it was guys. nuts. And I believe the parents as much as I, you know, I mean, much as I blame them at some points, I mean, if you're a parent and you let your, your child out of your eyes for that long because you're so fucking greedy. Yeah. I mean, one of the guys was like a production assistant sending pictures to like an eight-year-old of himself naked. Yeah. I mean, I mean whew, if you have not watched Quiet on the Set, and I still... I, I'm talking about all this, and it's, I've still got two episodes left to watch. <laughs> yeah, dude, it, it, believe it or not, it does get worse before it gets better. Jesus. But what I'm, I, and I don't know, I'm, what I'm guessing is this guy didn't know a whole lot of jail time. Oh, the, the Brian guy? No, he's still, he works in, in 
children's television today, I think they said. Are you serious? I have not gotten to that part yet. So. Yeah, he's still he's still at it. Yeah, it, it's the whole the whole thing was unbelievable, man. I mean, really was unbelievable. Yeah, get that potato potato juice. Remember, uh, yeah, she was like playing with a potato. Yeah, trying to squeeze the potato to get the juice out of to it. To get the man. juice out the potato, and she's working it with two hands and yeah, stuff. She squirts her in the face. And stuff. <laughs> These are children that we're yeah. talking about. It's disgusting. It was pretty harsh. <coughs> I said, I, "Listen to this poor guy just drink the belt. He didn't want to. He didn't want to open up about what happened. They actually showed court papers about what happened to this guy. And I guess from what I've read, after he did like the filming of this, yeah, like he's back in rehab. Oh, is he? Oh, I didn't. Know, I yeah. did not know that. Wow. Well, that's uh, yeah. They they fucked that kid up forever. Yeah." I mean, he had all kinds of substance problems and stuff. And he was actually charged with, like, lewd something or other with a minor girl, too. Yeah. Here in Cleveland. Was it in Cleveland? It was in Cleveland, yeah. Drake Bell arrest Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. Um, Drake Bell, 35-year-old actor known for starring in the popular Nickelodeon show Drake and Josh, was sentenced Monday to two years of probation and charged in related in charges related to inappropriate communication with a girl who met him online and attended his Cleveland concert in 2017. Wow, I, but I heard she was that she, 15. I heard that he didn't know how old she was or something like that. Well, he knew enough that they were that they sentenced him. Yeah. No more Ray Romano for me. That was disgusting. Have you uh, seen how Patricia Eaton has distanced herself from him? Right. Has she? I don't know. Another Cleveland connection. Patricia Eaton, you know, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, when my parents were going through some stuff back in the day, mm -hmm. Patricia Eaton's dad actually uh, came over to my house and asked if me and my mom needed anything and was actually there for us and... Is that Chuck, the, yeah. the great Chuck Heaton, the, the Chuck sports Heaton. writer? Uh, it was actually very nice to, to, to me when I was younger. Uh, good dude. I wish I could talk to her. I want to get her on one of these shows. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> she lives here. I don't even know how to get a hold of her. So if anybody knows how to get a hold of Patricia Heaton, tell her I, I knew her dad and would like to talk to her. Maybe ask but your dad. Don't let her see the show. Ask your dad. You think <laughs> your dad still that. knows Chuck? I, well, Chuck has passed. So. Oh, has he? Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, quiet on the set. If you have not watched it, I suggest you watch it if it seems interesting to you. Otherwise, you're going to be nauseated about the fact that Nickelodeon and how many, you don't know how many times I let my daughter just sit in her room and watch Nickelodeon shows, never think yeah. twice about it. Now, if you watch SpongeBob or anything like that, because I like SpongeBob, obviously I'm wearing a fucking shirt right now. Sure. But SpongeBob has a lot of adult references in it, mm -hmm. and stuff that you know, if your your kids probably aren't going to catch on to, but you will if you watch it. Sure. But we're talking about an animated character here, and and we're not talking what these kids, what they, these guys were doing to these children, like real life children, is horrifically disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, that that special was. I told you when when I told you about it, it, it was really really creepy, man. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm happy. I'm kind of sad that you told me to watch it because it's it's uh, it's disturbing to see. Yeah, that. now you can't watch Nickelodeon again, can you? No, it's it's totally changed my thing. But all right, I, I again, I still have a couple episodes left. Dan Schneider just seemed like he was a dick. Yeah, but I. Was he did he wasn't really involved in the pedophile stuff, was he? Well, he's the one that hired two different pedophiles onto the set. I understand. And he's the one that wrote he's he was the producer that wrote a lot of that stuff. So he I understand that he hired people, but I mean you can hire a you know a bunch of people you don't know. What he had pedophilic like. he had pedophilic qualities. He nowhere in this did they say that you know he stuck his finger in some some ten year old's ass or anything like that. But 
but they they definitely made it clear that a lot of the dirty stuff that was totally inappropriate was written by written Snyder. By yeah. And some of the stuff that even was done to the adults, like, dude, you saw the part where the one girl said that she, in order to to do a table read or whatever, she had to bend over the table and read with her ass sticking up at him. Yeah, I did see that. You know, I mean, he was a he was a dirty player too. He seemed like he was a misogynist. He definitely didn't yeah. seem to have a thing that about he, was, he treated women a lot differently than than yeah. men. Yeah, he 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 had his own set of problems, but did he actually diddle kids? I did not hear that. I mean, I, I saw a statement. I think there's a YouTube statement that he did, that Dan Snyder did about uh, you know this whole thing after this came out. And he said that a lot of his things he felt bad for and a lot of the way he treated people and he owes some people a strong apology. He said. <laughs> I would say a strong apology is pretty necessary with uh, yeah. some of the accusations that came out. Yeah, but what does he care now? He's a multi. He's probably worth two hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, how do I? How the in the world does Nickelodeon survive this and not get sued and completely shut down? Because they're not there anymore. Pedophiles. Because they're not there anymore. And the one is still working in the business. That feck guy or whatever. He's still in the business. He did his jail time and then showed up at Disney. Oh, my God. Let's see what Dan Schneider's net worth is. He got paid a $7 million payout. He's worth $40 million. Yeah. Is that all? Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry I did that to you guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll be over here on my yacht if you go on and accept my apology. <laughs> Forty million dollars. Forty million bucks. Plus, he probably still gets. I mean, let's be honest. He's still the executive producer to all those shows. So, anytime they stream on Paramount Plus or on Peacock or whatever, he gets he gets his royalty check. I still don't see how. I mean, look. Nickelodeon, though, employed those people and put those kids in harm's way. How do they not get the shit suit out of them? Well, they probably... Rick Bell, I'd be trying to own Nickelodeon at this point. I'm sure there's something going on, and there's probably been settlements. The reason you're not hearing about it is because it's been settled quietly. It's the only reason it could... Because, obviously, with an expose on, on this out there like it is on Max... The fact that you're not here. Like, look at the R. Kelly thing. When they put out there surviving R. Kelly, then you heard about 15 or 30 different lawsuits that were pending. Oh, yeah. You don't hear none of that with this Nickelodeon, which means somebody threw some hush money out there to be quiet. No, somebody I- said, yeah, you could do this special, but we're not going to, you know, we're here's some money if you don't sue us. And I started thinking about that. Like, God forbid that my my kid was in some sort of scenario like that. Or your kids were in some sort of mm-hmm. situation like these kids were. I mean, would you take hush money or would you fucking just I, sue the shit out of them until the doors closed on Nickelodeon? For me, it'd be bullet in the skull. Yeah. <laughs> I would be that kind of harsh. If yeah, somebody guy, did something to my kid. I'd be the guy jumping over the courtroom, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. to tackle some guy and stab him in the throat. I mean, that would be yeah. me. I'd be like, who wants who wants five hundred dollars worth of cigarettes a month in their in their commissary? Just kill this guy in prison. But there's a lot to these stories. I'm telling you, if you're interested, in it, get, uh, it's worth watching on Max. I did, dude. It was crazy, it, and so many of those people went on to be pretty famous. You know that yeah. that the what's her name Amanda Cosgrove, the iCarly girl, and um. Amanda you know, that was a Snyder thing. Um, Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes. She was a. She was in this thing. And you could tell yeah. she was got fucked up by this whole oh. situation too. Yeah, she was a mess. She was a mess. What's her name? Jeanette. Um, Jeanette McCurdy. Yep. A- Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. J- um, Jamie Lynn Spears. And I'm, you know, you haven't heard anything out of like Ariana Grande or anything. I wonder if she. I mean, if I was her, I mean, she's a good billionaire anyways. So just, I'd just run away and hide from this. I wouldn't yeah, I mean, it it, it would take her. It would it would really tar- tarnish her career. Yeah, I'd run away from that as far as you could get. 
You know who I, I and maybe Snyder just wasn't involved in it or whatever, but or I don't know if it was a Disney show or a Nick show, but I was surprised that there was no mention at all of Selena Gomez. Yeah, I didn't hear anything about her. Because she's severely fucked up in the head. And and she she's come out herself and said that it was from her time as a as a child star, but you know, I, Nothing. I, I maybe she wasn't in that crew. Maybe that's some the other of those kids. I, I I I didn't watch. What's the name of that show? All that. Yeah. I don't really watch it all. I, I think they what, from Saturday Night Live. The Keenan. Yeah, Keenan Thompson. Keenan Williams, maybe. Keenan Thompson, I think. Keenan Thompson, yeah, Thomas Thompson. He uh, he kind of said, "Look, I didn't see any of this uh, go on." Uh, he might be another one just kind of like running away and I don't want yeah. anything to do with this mess. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stay away from this. Because it was a... Uh, yeah, this is a great point hell here. Story. This is a great point, too. But, Quiet on the set came out and then bam, Diddy story comes out and pops to take over the news cycle. Has he been caught yet? He's not being looked for yet. I, I've been following this thing. Okay, there was somebody in Chagrin Falls that was charged with, like, supplying his drugs and guns to him. But that guy is, dude, it, it's the weirdest damn story. There's, and, and all right, I'm going to go completely conspiratorial with this because there's all kinds of conspiracy about this. But um, there is no warrant out for Puffy. He is, he's popped up a couple of times in florida since they raided his houses so the the conspiracy is is that he might be like a informant type like a cia informant type okay i refuse to believe that well there's why why do you refuse to believe that because he's a scumbag yeah i mean look i'm just reading some of the the, the headlines that are out there from like a day ago mm-hmm uh, Sean Diddy Combs' luxury yacht draws comparison to Epstein Island amid sex trafficking. Fed set to widen Diddy sex probe over claims. Rapper boasted about uh, shooting people, bribing, and then the sex stuff. Well, it's been, but, but he's been, he, boys club. Rapper wooed Wall Street elite. I'm telling you, there's a, this is going to be another Epstein thing. It could very well be, but it's not yet. And the government looked... We don't know for sure that Epstein was killed. We don't know that he wasn't just moved somewhere in secret. Maybe you know, the right people don't want him arrested. <laughs> or maybe the right people know that he's got evidence and they're trying to protect him. Keep the evidence some. Um, yeah, the evidence away. You know who's getting sm smashed to shit on, um, online over, over this P. Diddy stuff? LeBron James. Why? What because he, he was at a bunch of these fucking P. Diddy oh. parties. <laughs> Let me see if I can't find that video. There's yeah, LeBron, there there's a there's a clip that's been floating around on online with LeBron bragging about oh what happens at a what happens at a P. Diddy party stays at a P. Diddy party. Oh, here it is. It got controversial it. IG live surface with LeBron. Yeah, this is my yeah I got it. And nothing would make me happier to see this guy go away. Videos of LeBron James at Diddy's parties continue to emerge. Here you go. Everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of articles out there about LeBron. at the uh... About LeBron being in the P. Diddy, P. Diddy thing. So is LeBron is LeBron impl implicated in this? Antonio Brown digs up report of LeBron James attending Diddy's birthday. Now everybody will say, well, you know, it's not a big deal to to be at a birthday party, but you know, just depends on what happened at that birthday party. Man, yeah, he's there's a lot of stuff out there. That's what I'm saying. LeBron is in the middle of this mix. <laughs> LeBron's in a dude. All these 
if if we've learned anything, if Trump has done anything right, which I'm I will gladly admit he has, believe it or not. I know a lot of people are probably surprised by that, but I will admit he's done a lot of things right. The thing that he has done the most right is taken all of the glow off of anything in the media. And all of the glitz and glamour is now gone, and we're really learning who these fucking people are. Wow. Like, you know, you know who Michael Rappaport is, right? Oh, yeah, that's, he had a big 180 about how he uh, thinks. But did you see why he had a 180? Uh. Because there's a video of him that somebody shot where he was, like, in another room taking a phone call talking about well, you got to pay me more money if you want me to say this about Israel or you want me to say that about Israel. Wow. <laughs> and then he catches him. He's like, what are you fucking shooting? You know. Well, he was the biggest Trump hater of all time. Oh, yeah. And now he loves now, Trump. All of a sudden, he's like, I love Trump. Trump is right. This guy, Biden's an idiot. Yeah, probably somebody paid him. That's how he's making his money. He's a grifter now. Michael Rappaport. Yeah, I mean, he's, dude, it, it, all of these guys. That That's what we've learned. Welcome, Michelle. Don't you think, don't you think we've, we've learned? Look, now if we could just get a totally honest media that would actually expose these people for who they are, then this place would be a, a much better place. But that's never going to happen. We're starting to see the truth, but... We need an honest media. We need. A, but look at where you're seeing the truth. You're not seeing it on the news. No, dude. Gonna, we learned more from Cat Williams on Shannon Sharp's podcast about these scumbags in Hollywood than we've learned in 20 years of media coverage. Oh, yeah. 20 years. And Cat Williams was out there just putting it out there. Yeah. They, but you're right. That's the way I guess we're going to have to start getting our news now because the real news doesn't give you the news. Yeah, there is no real news. The real news is on podcasts and on, you know, Rumble or BitChute or Odyssey or. I mean, Joe Rogan is more of a news source than, than CNN. I mean, Absolutely. Absolutely is. I have to admit, man, that show is really good. Which one? Rogan. I, I like Rogan. I used to watch it all the time. I, I It used to be like my daily thing. But, man, he started just talking two and three hours with people that were boring. Well, I agree. There's sometimes where you there's a guest that is a little bit whatever. But Yeah, I'm cool with it sometimes. But then sometimes he has, well, here's, here's this guy, and he worked in the lab that worked in the lab with a guy that was in Wuhan. And then it's like three hours, and it's like, dude, now I agree with, is this Scott? I think this is Scott. He is 100% right here. PBD, uh, Patrick Bet David, that guy rocks. Yeah. I don't know, if, have you ever watched him? I have not. Look him up. Pa Valuetainment, he's absolutely correct. Might be the best interviewer out there today. Really? He's fantastic. He he asks great questions. He challenges guys. You know who he interviewed? And, and this is where I discovered him. He interviewed our friend, Michael Francisi. Oh, really? And that's where I first discovered him was that he, he when he first started, he was big into the mob thing. So he was doing all the interviews with like Francisi and um, Sammy the Bull and, yeah. you know, all these mob guys. But now he's just taken it into all kinds of places but he's a fantastic interviewer he's really really good recommend that to everybody good call scott check that out that's of course if they're not listening to us you can watch that show on you know the side well we're only on three hours a week there's a lot of there's another 159 hours <laughs> that'll be us someday we're working our way <laughs> you know it's, it starts like this and then just give it a month or two, Joe Rogan's. Yeah. Right now we make nothing. And a couple of months we'll be making millions. <laughs> we'll be making a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, eventually these rumble texts or whatever are gonna take off and we're gonna make a lot of money doing it. Well, again, if you wanna if you wanna do the 
super chat or whatever in there, I guess we got to kind of ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't just just expect people to do it with. I don't no, know how it even works. So you know, yeah. know. I, I and I'm not big on the whole pander. To be honest, I mean, you guys what? want something big on pandering like that? Hey, we'll answer your question if you just uh, if you just give us ten dollars in a super chat. <laughs> I'm not big on that. Look, I'm a whore. Okay. <laughs> I'll you admit ask it. For, you <laughs> ask for it. <laughs> you type in something you want me to do and you're going to pay me for it, I'll do it. <laughs> I'd much rather they buy a cameo or something. Something that we actually give them something for it. You want me to chop off my own foot live on this podcast? A couple hundred bucks and done. There you go. <laughs> There's a, The bidding starts at $300, people, if you want <laughs> yeah. Seth to chop his foot off live on the show. <laughs> Only three hundred. That's the starting bid. Who's up for it? Just a reminder that it is National Limb Loss and Limb Different. Uh, That's right. Month. Watch it. Watch somebody post right now. Three hundred. <laughs> 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 We're kidding, folks. Just to, just to make sure that everybody's clear on that. We're kidding on that one. But feel free to send over, you know, gifts and, yeah. and stuff. Well, I've got. The, the month I got four hundred for you, Seth. Michelle the Great, 400 bucks to lop off the leg. All right, that's a starting bid. We'll keep it going. We'll keep a tally going throughout the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Is there a minimum here? What's the minimum for you to cut your foot off? 10 Gs? It's got to be 10 Gs, right? You're going to spend more than that at the hospital. Yeah, so, I mean, somebody's going to offer 10 Gs. I'm going to have to chop off my foot. <laughs> it's going to be another version of Boxing Helena. If it ever is going to happen, then I will forego the traditional route of going to the hospital and just do it myself and take the tensions. <laughs> <laughs> Bandage it up. I still have some bandages yeah. left from the last time it happened. You'll you'll find you'll have Masashi. will find you a place that has like a bandsaw or something in there for cutting <laughs> yeah. cutting meat off a bone for a steak or something. You just go in there and have them lop your leg off. <laughs> do we get to decide? With what tool? <laughs> Man, Michelle, you're a freak. <laughs> oh, if so, four hundred and one dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious, Michelle. What would you like me to use? Oh, did you really want to know? <laughs> I do kind of. I'm kind of interested to see where she's going with this. <laughs> I like to say, like a spoon or something. <laughs> Grapefruit spoon. <laughs> You just have to Digging dig through it. your left. You have to <laughs> dig through spoon at a time. <laughs> She's just kidding. Uh, what time is it? It's about that time. Yeah, it's time to go. Oh, what a hell of a show. That was fun. Yeah, we didn't really talk about anything, but okay. <laughs> we, we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about it's National Amputee Month. We showed the yeah. ribbon for that so everybody knows. We talked about politics for a little while. Talked about quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. We talked about the end of the world and what you would do. That's right. So we did cover quite a bit today. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and what more, what more do you want? We're not Joe Rogan yet. Yeah, and and a in a completely bullshitting around show. We we did cover a lot of space. We're not Neil Patrick Harris yet. Who's that guy you talked about? Neil Neil, what's his name? Um, Pat. God damn it. Um, I can't remember his name now. Valuetainment guy. We're not him. David, David Bet Patrick or whatever his name is. No, something David. Bet David. Patrick Bet David. Whatever. I'll go find him. and Just look up Valuetainment. I think we covered quite a bit on this uh, rousing edition of the Seth Williams Show with Chris Aiken. Yeah, that was fun. Just being goofs. So I hope everybody has a, a good t- Tuesday. Yes. And then um, I guess, God willing, we'll talk to you again on what? Wednesday. Wednesday for the last show ever, maybe. Because the rapture is coming on Monday for the eclipse. That's right. So grab some hookers, grab some blow, enjoy the rest of your uh, week. And (laughs) And the rest of your life. (laughs) We'll talk to you (laughs) on Wednesday before the rapture. All All right. right. All right. See ya.
Assured Window Cleaning specializes in window cleaning, chandelier cleaning, blind cleaning, gutter cleaning, and post-construction cleaning. In business since 1947, Assured Window Cleaning has probably been serving its customers in Cleveland for 75 years. As a family-owned and operated business, Assured Window Cleaning has built their reputation on trust and delivering the best results possible. When you need window cleaning services for your home or business, contact Assured Window Cleaning. We're one of the top window cleaning companies in all of Cleveland for both residential and commercial. Visit our website today at www.assuredwindowcleaning.com or call us at 440-989-0122 for a quote. And remember, everybody knows Tony. Contact Assured Window Cleaning today.